Welcome to the Executive America Podcast, where we speak with the country's most influential industry leaders on the business and economic development issues taking place nationally. You can stay up to date with all of our content, including our publications, newsletters, and podcasts by visiting www.executiveamerica.com and clicking on subscribe. Today's guest is Voyager Digital co-founder and CEO, Steve Ehrlich. Voyager Digital is a public licensed crypto asset broker that provides investors with a turnkey solution to trade crypto assets. Voyager offers investors best execution, data, and custody services through its institutional grade platform. Voyager's goal is to bring a better, more transparent, and cost-effective alternative for trading crypto assets to the marketplace. Steve, thanks for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me. Appreciate being here. So to start us off, why don't you provide an overview of the cryptocurrency market as it stands today? Look, the cryptocurrency market is an extremely fragmented market today with over 200 global exchanges in the marketplace where people can trade from around the globe on these different exchanges. Additionally, it's fragmented from not just the execution, but from the custody piece and how people hold their assets. That makes it very, very, very confusing for the average retail investor to participate in what is probably one of the most growing assets there is in the markets. Uh, And so our job is, is really to to try to navigate those markets for customers. Okay. And so how did Voyager Digital form out of this? Well, I got together with my co-founders. Uh, there was four of us. Uh, Philip Aton, who's a serial entrepreneur uh, who started billion-dollar companies like Socure and Pager. Gaspard DeDruzzi, who's been in the capital markets. Uh, and then most notably outside of myself is Oscar Salazar, who was the founding CTO of Uber. Uh, We got together, we looked at the competitive landscape in the crypto market about two and a half years ago, almost three years ago at this point. And we looked at what was in the marketplace and the breadth of our knowledge and brought it together and said, I think, you know, we we could bring a product to market that is really consumer friendly, that really simplifies the markets, but gives consumers enough information that they can make a really good decision on which crypto assets they want to hold earn and invest in and trade over the near future. That's how we came together. And we started building the product off of you know a few meetings. So you've talked about um, making this simple for users, but what, what other problems exist at the moment with trading cryptocurrency? Yeah, first and foremost, there is multiple exchanges. So if you go to trade, you don't know where you, know, you should open up an account to trade on that exchange, which leads to price transparency. There is very little price transparency in the crypto market. So one one exchange could have a price of Bitcoin and another can have a different price. You have no idea where to go. Uh, And so that's one of the confusing parts and crypto dark. And that's what I think it's, it's, it keeps the retail investor from really participating in that market because of the fragmentation. The other side is they don't really understand how custody works. Yeah, there's all these conversations about uh, self custody. You know, own your keys, own your coin. That doesn't make sense to a retail consumer because they don't own share certificates either. You don't hold a share of a of a company in your in in your certificate form in your house. So we have to simplify it and make it easy for people to understand security, custody, and trading of these markets, which is what the Voyager platform does and brings to the US market today. Mm. And what's different about your technology in this respect when put up against competitors? Yeah, great question. You know, We look at the market as twofold. There's a lot of exchanges on one side of the world, which make a really complex trading uh, platform, whether it's on a desktop or a mobile. Then on the right side of the equation is a lot of apps that are out there that really oversimplify the market and therefore make it so that you can, you could only buy Bitcoin. Uh, we play down the middle. We want all the retail consumers to use our platform. Uh, I'm an ex e trader. I was there in the days when e trade first uh, grew up and started bringing online brokerage to to the masses. We want to bring crypto to the masses. So we have three or four distinct different uh, differentiators for us. One is we offer 42 coins for people to trade. So more than either side of that equation. Two is we allow them to earn interest on 18 of those coins. 
So not only can you trade, you can actually earn interest without locking up your coins and, and therefore, you know, get more wealth from earning interest. You know, three is we allow people to transfer uh, coins in from other places to fund their account. And then four is the ease of use of the app where you can actually download the app and then fund and trade all within two minutes or less, abiding by all regulatory uh, requirements and making it really easy and simple. Again, that word simple for people to open, trade and buy their cryptocurrency. Hmm. And where do you see the opportunity for potential investors by looking into Voyager Digital? We're just on the beginning. The way I look at this is that we're still in the first inning of the game on the adoption of crypto. So, you know, first and foremost for investors in Voyager, you know, you're getting in at an early stage. You're getting in when we we only touch the surface on the number of investors that will actually open crypto accounts, trade and hold crypto. You know, two is I think that you know, from an investor standpoint, we're going to expand our product. So we're going to bring new things to the market, whether it's debit cards, whether it's credit cards, whether it's margin on trading, whether it's a desktop version of our pro- platform, whether it's utility to our token. So there's a whole bunch of product expansion that we're bringing that investors should be excited about. And that'll expand our margins and our revenue for every customer. And then third is our geographic expansion where we've just recently announced we're going to enter the Canadian market by the fall of 2020. And we have plans to enter the European market and Asian market right after, you know, and Latin American market, I shouldn't forget that, right after we we do the Canadian market, we're going to expand our footprint from a geographic perspective. So investors are really getting in on the early stages of what we're doing today and where we're going to be 12 months from now. You had mentioned uh, a few names during our conversation. Can you tell us more about the board and management who make up the company? Yeah, like I mentioned, you know, my my founding team, uh, Gaspar DeDruzzi, Philip Aton, Oscar Salazar, Gaspar and Philip are on our board. Additionally, on our board, we've got Jarrett Lillian. Jarrett is was the CEO of E-Trade for about five years, a uh, longtime friend of mine. Uh, we've worked together many years. Uh, just a capital markets experience that he has really extends what we're trying to do because we think that and we believe that cryptocurrency is an extension of the capital markets. And then when you drop down into my management team, we've got uh, Gerard Hanchi, who is our chief operating officer, uh, who's a long-term capital markets guy, and Janice Barrio, who is also an ex-e-trader, who runs our compliance, who has been with us a long time and has long-term experience in the capital market. So we've got a really experienced team here, which sets us apart from a lot of other cryptocurrency companies. And again, being public with this experience is a recipe for success. Mm. So let's talk about that. How do you use that experience to assist in moving the company forward? Uh, One is regulatory understanding. We understand what the regulators want, what they need from a know your customer and anti-money laundering rules. We think it's very important that we abide by those rules. So regulatory experience really you know, sets us apart and puts us on a, on a path to success. You know, the other thing is we have a breadth of connections within the industry as we keep growing this out. And we see that there's quite a bit of people that have transitioned from the traditional capital markets into the crypto and digital world. So we, we use those those connections, that experience to broaden our network and expand what we're doing and expand our product. Uh, you know, the other thing is we're, we're just seasoned veterans. We've been around the block for 25 years in my case. I've seen the ups and downs. I was around the stock market in 2001 when it crashed, around the financial crisis of 2008, 2009, and saw what happened there. And so I've navigated these waters either as part of E-Trade or running my own company uh, in navigating these waters in difficult times. that you, you can't dismiss how important that is when you're building a public company uh, from the ground up. Those things are just really important. And then finally, you know, because of that experience, we know how to anticipate when to launch products, when to pull back, when to look at expanding our team, when to contract, because we've been through these market cycles. Everything's cyclical in our mind. And by having this experience, we're setting ourselves up to be the most successful public company and the only agency broker in the space to be to be successful. 
Okay. You're talking about the past and how that's going to affect the business. So as we move forward, how does that affect and impact what your immediate near-term and longer-term goals are? Yeah, look, I think uh, we've only really been in the market for about 12 months with our product at this point in time. So from a near-term perspective, uh, we're expanding our customer base. We've seen tremendous growth uh, in the the quarter ending June. Uh, We're expecting to see more growth in the quarter ending September. Uh, And some of our near-term goals are really to get the the product expansion, uh, move more towards a desktop version of our product, uh, add some utility to our token. Those are kind of near-term. Longer-term vision is to really bring uh, geographic expansion into Canada uh, and then also add debit cards. These are all within our near, short, long-term goals that we think in building out our product building our business, growing to be, you know, a a tremendously successful company. These are on our horizon. Mm. We're just about to wrap up. I'm going to ask you if there's anything else you'd like to add, but as an outsider looking in, I mean, what makes you and your team so bullish on crypto compared to other financial products? Yeah, that's another really good question is that, look, I think Bitcoin itself is starting to become a store of value. It is the digital gold. So we're really bullish on it. We see the environment today in the economy, you know, the U.S. government putting more money into the economy and people want an alternative. And those alternatives are either gold or digital gold, which is Bitcoin. Plus, you know, on the cryptocurrency front, we've seen a a tremendous amount of good, solid projects in the space. Uh, A lot of them are listed on our app with, with being able to trade to bring some more efficiencies into the market. You know, first, you know, the other one is a stable coin. I think that stable coins will replace using dollars in the marketplace. I mean, in this virus time that we're in, in this pandemic, most people do not want to use dirty dollars. You take cash out of their pocket. They want a digital dollars. And I think all these are starting this adoption of cryptocurrency. That's why I'm so bullish on this. People want alternatives to what's in the marketplace. And I think they're starting to realize what is there and how we get to the future. So before we finish today, then, is there anything else you would like to add? No, I'd just like to say thank you for the time. We're extremely uh, happy about the progress we've made at Voyager, where we're going. Uh, We're seeing the progress continue through the month of July uh, and expect it to exceed our numbers over uh, over the near term. So I thank you again for taking the time. Excellent. Well, thanks for your time as well today, Steve. Thank you. This has been a production of Executive America, a division of Romulus Rising Proprietary Limited. All rights reserved. You can stay up to date with Executive America, including our publications, newsletters, and podcasts by visiting www.executiveamerica.com and clicking on subscribe.